Aloha and welcome to another episode of Cape and Cow Unlimited. I'm your host Alex Burns and I'm joined with this guy, Stephen Carter. Hey. How's it going, man? It's going well. It is going well. It's going super well. It's going Superman versus Batman well. Or oh. Batman versus Superman. Well. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, I mean, today that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Dark Knight taking on the Man of Steel. Are we excited? Are we nervous? What are our feelings towards this movie, the future of DC on film? Mm. And um, yeah, we've got a resident Marvel expert here, so we've got a, we've got a different <laughs> perspective. We're not just <laughs> fanboy, you know, sort of yeah. gushing for, for these guys. So yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on the fence, but you, I know definitely for one, are, are definitely sold. I think you had your ticket bought as soon as they announced this film, didn't they? Exactly, exactly. So they know full well they didn't need to convince me, the Warner Brothers and everything. They're like, they, we don't need to convince Alex. People like Alex. <laughs> They're going to go and see this film because yeah. Batman's in it, Superman's in it. Mm. So there's been a lot made about how much they've revealed in the footage, um, the trailers that are being released, you kind of feel. And I have actually gone, I'm going cold turkey on this now. I'm not watching <laughs> any more trailers, any more promos. Still report it on the website, but yeah, I've gone cold turkey. But what, I mean, what's your thoughts in terms of how much they're showing? Do you think they've been pretty restrained or how, do you feel you know too much? Well, um, looking at the last trailer, mm. I... I thought that they were revealing a little bit too much, and it's received a lot of criticism from that, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, they finally revealed who the, uh, the potential fan, the fanboy backlash. Yeah, yeah you know. I mean, the fact that yeah, the fanboys have sort of been up in arms. Yeah, we'll say <laughs> it is. It is sort of almost taken out of context when there's an internet reaction. You wonder, well, what's the general audience reaction? Because I showed, you know, friends of mine who aren't comic book fans, like, you know, my mum, my dad, mm. and my brother as well, and my grandparents, and they're all like, whoa, this is this is looking awesome. You know, they're, they're just seeing Batman vs Superman. When Doomsday rocks up, they don't know who Doomsday is. No, exactly. You know, it might yeah. as well be the Hulk for all they're concerned about. <laughs> so you got to pull well, that in. child from the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. It does look a little <laughs> weird. Hopefully he gets the more of the bone yeah. ar- around the brow sort of thing. Mm. Um, but you can see where I'm coming from. People don't know these characters. They know these two guys and Wonder Woman. But yeah. as for everything else going on, it's going to be a surprise. You can show this sort of stuff to general audiences audiences in the, in the trailer and they're not going to piece it all together. It's us that suffer for being fans because we're... Yeah, you can see where Zack Snyder's going. He's appealing to the broader audience yeah. here. Uh, he really wants as many people going. And you can understand from their point of view, because DC are putting a lot on this film. Yeah. They need it to be a success. And that's probably why he decided to include yeah. that. I mean, he wants people to drag and see what is this you know, monstrosity that yeah. Lex has created. Exactly. What, what pulls these guys together? Because, you know, you can criticise it. I had this sort of thing where... By the end of that third trailer, Batman and Superman are joking. They're exchanging jokes about you know Wonder Woman and things like that. And it's sort of like yeah. they're meant to be fighting, and they've kind of revealed that okay, well things are going to get okayish to a point, and they're going to be able to have a bit of banter, yeah, like you know Iron Man and Captain America do. So I can I can see where that might be a bit frustrating because it's verses, and I wonder if they've had a meeting at Warner Bros. where they're just like everyone's going, why are these two fighting? We should remind them that they're superheroes, yeah. and there's probably going to be another reason going on, but. I don't think they needed to do that. I think they could have held back on one thing, definitely not showing the trinity of Wonder Woman, Batman and Superman lined up for the first time. I feel that's been spoiled for me because I was so excited when I saw that. <laughs> yeah. No, that, it, I think there's some magic in the fact that you know some of these things should be kept to rumours. Mm. Um, I, I just love that sort of whole thing. I mean, there's still that rumour about uh, Bizarro, isn't there? That's yeah. It's still yeah. circulating around. So we never know. We might see something like that. The idea that Bizarro is actually like the Superman clone, and he's the one that's fighting Batman. The Franken Superman, yeah, that sort of transforms into into this monstrosity all through Lex. Mm. I'm not sure if I'm on board with the Superman clone rumor. I know we had the nightmare sequence, which was which was shown as an advertisement for the third trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I honestly believe that is a dream. I believe that's um, it. Would be interesting to see whose dream it is. Um, if it's Batman's, I kind of feel it's a bit weird, but seeing himself tied up. Yeah, <laughs> mm. but we touched upon the fact that Superman's got an army. This is totally out of character for the guy. You know, I think it's an end of world scenario that Wonder Woman might be having. Yes, yeah. I mean uh, that's the thing. Uh, whenever we see this army, it, it's only seen in that sort of um, style that you know Batman with his duster coat on yeah. and things like that. We, that's the only thing we've seen that in. We've never seen it in any other yeah. context here. I, so I it's got to be. It's, 
I think it's Wonder Woman coming in. Yeah. What's her reason for entering the dispute between these two guys? She could be the what enter yeah. all really. I think she's the one that brings these guys together. She's like, at the end of the day, dudes, you know, if you guys keep fighting, I've had this vision on Themyscira or whatever of, of an end of the world scenario mm. where the two of you are just going to end up killing each other. And then you see parademons as well. That's what we missed in the trailer as well. Yeah. And everyone knows where parademons come from. Apocalypse. Apocalypse is World War Planet, Dark Side. Mm. So there you go, man. In intense. Is that the end of world scenario? That the invasion from Apocalypse is coming. So time to buckle up. We need to become a Justice League instead <laughs> of a, instead of a you know bray two bunch of dudes that are just fighting and leveling another city. What they do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. No, I am. Um, I just like the way uh, the way that they can potentially lead this steer this direction. Um, there's a danger of it possibly going a little bit too close to the new Avengers film. Yeah, but I I I can see where you're going with that. Like everything sort of will build towards a huge confrontation slash alien invasion. But every kind of Justice League or Avengers comic book, whenever it's relaunched or anything like that, that just tends to be the standard plot. Do you know what I mean? Like I remember Grant Morrison's run on Justice League. JLA when he brought in the White Martians and they mm. introduced Ma- Martian Manhunter that way and stuff in the Justice League cartoon so yeah. it does kind of go down that role when you have these larger than life characters you have to come up with a threat that can contain all of them and it seems alien invasions are just sort of the go to <laughs> go to <laughs> territory we're form. familiar with that already yeah exactly and you know it, it's interesting Avengers versus Age of Ultron who did you feel was more of a threat Ultron or the Chitauri yeah, well, it, that's the thing. They were kind of more, more or less on the same mm. scale, weren't they? They um, both had an army at their hands. Like you have to come up with something that mm. that occupies all the Avengers at once, all the, yeah. all of the Justice League at once. So yeah, exactly. It'd be sweet. And obviously, yeah, there, there's a potential for the Justice League to expand a lot more as well. Mm. Uh, there's they're potentially going to be more Justice League members than Avengers, is there? Well, I mean, so okay, this is the confirmed list we've got. We know Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. It's going to be solo movies for The Flash. Yep. Um, a Green Lantern core movie. So not just focusing oh, yeah, on yeah. Hal Jordan. They're going to bring in the whole core. So it'll be interesting to see that that's just around and existing. Aquaman, Cyborg. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's all of them. I'm not missing any. Yeah. So no, I think you are. Aquaman, Jason Momoa and uh, Ray Fisher for um, Cyborg. Relatively unknown. Mm-hmm. Those are the, the interesting projects that are in count. And it's all... It's all being based off of this movie. So this is the starting point. This is why I was so excited because we don't know anything. All we had before this was Man of Steel. Yeah. You know, and that was a Marmite movie. It didn't quite hit. I enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. I did. Yeah. yeah. But you look on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's like a 50%. So people are just like <laughs> split people down the middle. It's like whenever I see a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes, I'm just like, I don't know if that's a good movie or not. Yeah. You mixed know? reviews. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. You know, whereas if it's a 60 you think meh <laughs> you know, it's kind of strange it's sort of like yeah. oh, I'll check this out it's one of those divisive <laughs> films but what I'm looking forward to seeing in relation to that is more from Superman as good as Ben Affleck's looks and, and stuff I want to see a bit more of a character progression with, with Superman which is I think what we're going to get in this movie what about you? well yeah hopefully I mean so we see him uh, get consulted by uh, his mum uh, yeah. his, his foster mum Martha um, about the fact that yeah he could live up to this this whole perception of what he's supposed to be this whole, almost a deity sort of thing yeah. or it could be none of it mm. you know it's his choice at the end of the day so it's da- it's down to him he's not reacting to uh, what he thinks he's supposed to do yeah. or anything like that he, he's now been given the freedom of choice yeah and that should be the interesting thing well definitely that's what I'm almost more excited about than season 2 fight because I feel we're getting a Superman character arc that they kind of wanted to do a Man of the Steel, but it, Man of Man of the Steel, Man, of, man the of Steel, <laughs> but it didn't quite work. I mean, Clark Kent Kal El was way too reactive, sort of passive, just reacting to the stuff that was happening around him. This yeah, starts bad. I'm gonna yeah. punch it. <laughs> Whereas he was kind of being told by his father, you know, the the Jor El projections, yeah. and have, you know, thing that was coming up. <laughs> um, he was kind of being told what he should do, and I didn't feel like he. Obviously, he made his own decisions internally, but we didn't see enough of him demonstrating why he made those decisions in yeah. the actual movie and I feel we're going to get that in Batman vs Superman and that contrasts perfectly with Batman who's a dude that's been in there done it got the Bat t-shirt yes. you know, he's just 
he's, he's laying down. We think he's responsible for everyone that's in Suicide Squad being in the slammer. Yeah. We think he's you know been around. There's a dead Robin in there somewhere as well. So Definitely. We don't know if he already knows some of the superheroes that are in in the in on Earth. We don't know if he's got any ties to Wonder Woman. I'd like to think in. that he does. I'd yeah. like to think that he's already done his research. It, sound, it seems like it's like this kind of Batman that was pre New Fifty Two. So yeah. he, he had a plan to take down every single yeah. superhero sort of exactly. thing. Exactly, and that's of course why he's able to stand up to to Superman in theory. Yeah, so he's he's thought it out all before. Um, it, it's it's looking very um, intense. I mean, I think that's why the speculation started with mm-hmm. this whole Batman versus Superman because we just come fresh off the uh, the Dark Knight trilogy. Yeah. Um, so Christopher Nolan's Batman was too realistic. He was just a guy in a suit, and he didn't really demonstrate a great amount of detective work. I'd like to see yeah. more of the detective come out in this series, or mm. possibly the, the strategist. True, true. Uh, yeah. Come out in this series. It, he's got to be close to the comics anyway, otherwise it's just going to be laughable. Superman could just literally just throw a punch. Yeah, the Christian Bale, they were going for something different. And that's yeah. almost why I'm kind of like, I'm okay with Batman not being in this movie as much, because I feel like we've been spoiled with Batman. Mm. It's not an oversaturation point. Some people are like sick. They think, just give another hero another chance. I'm in that mindset where, okay, we've had a, in my eyes, like a pretty much perfect trilogy of Batman movies with the Christopher Nolan franchise. Right. We've also got them great Burton movies to go back to every now and then. Mm. Now we've got a Batman who can be mysterious, vague, almost like yeah. the Joker was in The Dark Knight. He can pop in and, you know, not be in the movie as much, but when he does sort of steal the show, and that's kind yeah. of kind of what Batman does in the comics, you know, it's just like... This is what I'm looking forward to. The, uh, the, this, the, I'm hoping that the way they're going to introduce Batman is all this mythology. I mean, yeah. you saw it in the trailers, the first trailers and uh, everything like that. Is this shadowy figure who just attacks from the shadows. Yeah. Um, he's branding, or well, allegedly branding his victims mm. um, and things like that that we saw from the uh, first trailer. Yeah. It, it, it's the mythology of the Batman that comes first before you see the character and that's going to make him a lot more intimidating. Yeah, especially because freaking Superman's investigating him as Clark Kent yeah that's the whole deal he's like no one cares about Clark Kent taking on the Batman I think mm. that's what Perry White says yeah. in the trailer yeah they do man because I this dude man he's <laughs> going to find out everything about Batman he's going to unearth the legend so we'll be seeing Batman through an alien's eyes which is something really unique normally it's through you know um, with the Burton movies we saw it through Kim Basinger and that was a nice romantic aspect to the character yeah. and now we're going to get into the why are you doing this mm. reason you know you're like 50 years, 40 years old or whatever, <laughs> you know, I understand your parents were lost, but you're going too far. I've got this covered. Yeah. You know, I, I'm Superman, you know, I, I can handle things. Yeah. It's just like, we're going to see Batman's dilemma there. And also, Batman's got his own school to settle, the destruction in Metropolis, into Gotham. We know they're yeah. neighbouring cities. So yeah, they are. That Zod fight, now that you know it went into Gotham as well, that's really cool, man. Like, mm. it's just... There's so much to get excited about, and I think what we don't want to lose track of when we're talking about the negatives and our concerns yeah is just how awesome this has the potential there for how awesome this can be yeah I just can't wait for it um, Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor we'll just touch on that quickly How? what are you thinking about that it's difficult uh, he's some sometimes in some points he's uh, seems to be a very sort of decent Lex yeah. um, it, especially in the second trailer he seemed sort of very threatening and menacing mm. uh, the way he was coming out with the, the oldest lion in America yeah, and stuff. yeah 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 and then in the third one, he seemed more of a comic relief sort of character. Mm. I was like, really? Yeah. Um, I, the, the way I likened it was uh, almost to uh, Samuel L. Jackson's villain in... Um... Kingsman? Kingsman. Yeah. There we go. There. <laughs> I didn't know what he was going to say. We're just telepathically linked like that. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, in Kingsman. Uh, yeah. But it, he's, he's just, it seems to be this guy that has too much money mm. and therefore thinks he can rule the place. Yeah, Zack Snyder's put about the comparisons to like a Mark Zuckerberg or more than Mark Zuckerberg we saw yeah. in The Social Network. You know, not the real life one. So I, doubt, <laughs> I don't know, you know, know him, what, what he's building in his Facebook basement. But, you know, <laughs> this is a bit more of a modern, you know, the oh, Kevin Spacey's Gene Hackman, Lex Luthor's, they've been a bit more, you know, real estate tycoons like Australia. You know, they yeah, just like, yeah, they yeah. want land. Land's like the most important commodity. And I've always been sort of, I always thought that was a bit outmoded when the Lex in the comics is like building robots and yeah. you know taking on Superman with his intellect. We've had rumours as well he might be suiting up in this one as well. I don't know. We could yeah. have a, a, a biomech. <laughs> There's so much going on in this film. I know. It's two and a half hours, I think. So it needs to be. There's room for it, but I want some breathing room. I want some time with Jeremy Irons, Alfred. You know, I mm. want I want that party scene that they teased in the trailer to not be 
done in like two minutes. seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, exactly. I want some breathing room in this movie. I just, I hope it hits all the right notes. It's got so much to satisfy. I think it's impossible for it to get unanimous good reviews because we, we've had this conversation before about Marvel and DC. These two guys have so much preconceptions about them in terms of public public knowledge, the, the pop culture yeah. space. I think part not to pop- mention the cult following as yeah, well. Yeah, I think I part of the problem was for Superman. People don't really know Superman. There's so many different sort of versions of him floating around, and he's not been sort of thrust on you in the media so much that it's difficult to get to know him. And then that's that's a criticism of his character a lot of the times. It's he's unrelatable. Hmm. So I think when Man of Steel came along and tried to sort of put a spin on it, where okay, he's an outsider, and you know maybe he wouldn't deciding to be Superman straight away he just decided to go fish you know <laughs> you well, it's, a, yeah. it's a different spin on it and, and that's why I'm, I'm hoping they give a lot of attention to his arc and make him a character you can get behind because I don't just want everyone siding with Batman because he's cooler obviously he is but I just <laughs> want there to be a real conflict here you know I've got yeah. the same reservations about Batman that he might be too much of an asshole because we've seen that, that version of the character is quite popular. Look at the Lego movie. He's a complete douchebag. You know, <laughs> but it's funny. And you, you wonder sort of the lines they're going down. But, yeah. but nonetheless, these guys, they're fighting. Yep. I'm going to buy everything that comes out of this movie. I'm super excited. Um, let us know your thoughts on Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> Dawn of Justice. Dawn of the Justice League. That's coming to oh, you know, yeah. It's an unstoppable train. You, know, <laughs> you either get on or you get run over, man, because it's happening. <laughs> so, super excited. Thanks for checking out the video, and we'll keep you in the loop with everything Batman vs. Superman. Remember, cabincow.co.uk. See, See you, you soon. Later.